meeting to order. Let's get after it. Councillor Dobbins, could you bless the meeting, please? Oh, he did the last one. Excuse me. Uh, Councillor Crittenden. Yes. Could you do our blessing, please? Bet. Father, just want to come to you today. Just thank you for uh, another day you've given us, Lord. And just uh, thank you for the traveling grace we've had to get here. Go with us now as we do this business and uh, help us to do it to the best of our ability. We love you and thank you for all things good in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Shelly. See you. Hey, How are you? Janice Taylor. Here. Keith Austin. Will England. Honey. Harley Buzzard. Here. Joe Berg. Honey. Sean Crittenden. Honey. Mike Dobbins. Here. Frankie Hargis. Wanda Hatfield. Rex Jordan. Dick Legg. Honey. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Baker Shaw. Honey. <coughs> E.O. Smith? Yes. Yeah. Victoria Vespa? Honey. Brian Warner? Honey. We do have a quorum. All right, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the January 17th minutes. So move. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve the January 17th minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Okay, it brings us down to our reports, and Sean Slayton's right there on the front row. Good afternoon. A rainy afternoon. For those of you headed back to Tulsa and that way, it's it's coming down up there. Oh. So have a safe trip back. <laughs> it is just rain, all right? It is, but I looked at the radar and it's coming from the southwest again. So whether it holds together this far, who knows, but there's a chance. Uh, we had a great, I won't say great, we had a very good January. I think I said in the uh, council meeting that January wasn't going to be all that great, but ended up uh, 200000 above our budget, 600000 above last year. Uh, our diversified businesses had a fantastic month, and, and uh, we were very proud of that. Year to date, we're $4.3 million ahead of last year, so I appreciate all the hard work and effort our employees are are making and it's paying uh, gonna pay a dividend so uh, projects that we've got going the hard rock construction uh, the plans are being finalized last week I believe we put the uh, proposal out for a construction manager for that job and I think it's due back next week or maybe the week after uh, on March 26th and we'll be sending a notice out on this uh, we will be having a groundbreaking for the Tahlequah Casino here. So uh, be looking for that uh, calendar request whenever it, uh, it comes through there. I believe it's at 1 o'clock, but don't hold me to that. Uh, at the plaza, we are continuing to work with uh, several uh, businesses that want to locate in there. I'm not at liberty to say who they are or what they do right now, but... We have a signed LOI, which is a letter of interest, and we are work with one, and we are working towards finalizing the agreement with them uh, in the next two or three weeks, we hope. Once, once we do that, we'll make an announcement, and a few others will follow shortly thereafter. Uh, at the plaza, the highway project is nearing completion. We feel like that's about uh, three weeks away from being uh, done. We're waiting on AT&T for their manhole cover uh, on the uh, east side of the road, and then we'll be wrapping it up and doing another overlay there. Um, the lighting plan uh, that's going to go in the plaza is going to coordinate with the city, and uh, we've worked with them, and uh, we'll be moving forward with that plan, and that will put street lights and brighten up uh, that area so that in the evening time and night time it's not quite as quite as dark so that's my report I'll be happy to answer any questions Councillor Watkins stick hey Sean when's the due date on that town court to see them? Uh, completion date yes, sir. we're hoping it's done by March 1st of next year March 1st of next year mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, 
the lighting and all that, the electricity, you said that's city or lake region? The, the lighting that, plan is just the poles, the street poles. Is that lake region or that can be a city, the electric? That provides the electric service. Um, on the front part of that, I'm not sure who it is. On the casino part, it'll be OG&E. OG&E. Really? The casino part, yeah. They all kind of converge right in there. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Crendon. Sean, some of the C&I folks about the uh, new insurance package, there's quite a bit of confusion, had a lot of questions. I don't understand it all. Mm -hmm. Will you relay that to uh, Chris and Steve? Absolutely. And just the best way to go about them getting their, their I answers? I think maybe from what I've heard and seen you on the emails, maybe they need to go back and have another refresher on how that uh, happened and, and what the impact was or was not. Thank we tried to make it neutral on everybody. We did change the plans in that some drugs uh, are generic now, and that's caused some confusion. They they were getting a the drug. They went to the uh, drugstore, and they said, no, they don't uh, buy that anymore. Uh, it, but there's a generic, and so that kind of messed them up. They didn't know right, what they were getting. But Quite a few questions, like you said, if they could just kind of have one more yeah. kind of come together. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Anybody else have questions for Sean? I'm happy to announce that my daughters and I all got fragrant gems, bath bombs, and candles that are being produced in prior for right. Valentine's Day. So right. well, um, that's great. Some of that came full circle. So we, sh we should probably make a basket and distribute those next time. Yep. So. Yeah, there you go. It's quite a deal they're doing up there. It so really it is. I think okay. there's going to be more for from that. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing a good job for them, and it's yeah. Good. Okay. No more questions. We'll let Sean get back to. Thank you. What he does best. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, our treasurer had to be out of town today for some training for the Emerging School, but Jamie Cole is here to present. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Good afternoon, travel counselors. I believe you have our report. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you have or try to get you those answers. I'd just like to mention that our external auditors for the FY17 financial audit are on site and our staff is working diligently to try to get them all the information they need to get that wrapped up by the end of March. Okay. Is that BKD? Yes, sir. And then I have one question. It's actually in our budget narrative for today, and it looks like it is the first deposit into the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Can Is this the first time we've deposited to that new account? Do you? As I, as I recall, the Sovereign Wealth Fund also rode the uh, Education Trust into it from the motor fuels tax, so okay. that's a large uh, funding into that fund. But, yes, in the month of December, we did receive our first Dividend payment dividend. into that okay. fund. Yes, ma'am. That was the only question I had about that. Anything else for Jamie? Um, if he can't answer it, he can take it back. Go ahead, sir. And thank you for bringing that up. And those two funds are separate. I it's our intent to, to try to get those presented to you in our financial statement, but they will be individual funds. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Yes, Councilor Crittenden. Yeah. Jamie, is uh, we've got a work group on our promise. Uh, Scholarship, we're okay. kind of looking at some things. And Councilor Warner, Councilor Watkins, Dick. And now, how how does the the Hosta funds play into that? Uh, that? Yes, if if memory serves, I uh, believe we did a budget for eighteen that funded that program out of the general funds. What I seem to remember, I haven't studied that in a day or two, but it seemed like during budget hearings we funded that, or slightly after out of the general. Find anything on that? Will you send that over? Okay. Just or what we can look into for, okay. for funding different avenues there different avenues of funding for right. okay. thank you is, that, is, is Nahasi going to be able to fund that this year or no the uh, this year being 18 or 19 next year uh, I guess uh, we had to my knowledge we've not got the funding level for 18 yet um, but do you think is that going to be allowable uh, expense allowable cost for Nahaza to help out with that. 
allowable, I would think so. But um, yeah, I, I don't know, again, what the funding level for the HOSDA might be uh, for, for 18. There, memory calls, there were certain programs that we had to look at for funding levels for the HOSDA, anticipated funding levels there. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, Jamie. We're pretty yep. easy on you. <laughs> Okay, Diane Kelly's dying to report. She didn't get to come last time. She we're going to get work. double the report this time. <laughs> well, I've been busy. Uh, if you need to see me, you can find me here or over at Job Corps. <laughs> we are getting ready to go into our last leg of our five-year contract. So there's some things that Department of Labor starts hitting us with that they want done. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time over there. But I have some good news. We received word that one of our economic development projects that we started working with uh, back about three years ago. In fact, Chief called me one day and he said, Don, he said, the Tulsa Chamber and two guys from this business are coming down here and I need you up here. So here's a picture of the product. It's a paper <laughs> product. Anyway, they presented this to the Chief in that presentation, which was about three years ago. They have a plant there in Catoosa, not too far from our office in Tulsa. And uh, they said they were looking at all these other places. Well, we found out that they're going to locate in Inola. Uh, they're going to expand their operation. Uh, right now, we're working with them. They're in the Tulsa area. But when it gets in Inola, it's not really in our jurisdiction. That's right. But guess what? They have to be in our jurisdiction to get to the plant. The plant sits right on the edge and it sits right in the creek nation. But in order to get there, they got to come in on our side, on our highway. So we'll be helping with the recruitment. And uh, we're real excited because they contacted us three years ago, and this is one that we've had in our file. And so it's going to happen. And uh, we worked with a CNB on this project, and it's a paper mill. 300 jobs? Oh, yeah, well, that's kind of what they're saying. We'll just wait and see. It'll probably be gradual. You know how that is. But anyway, we're excited uh, because it's some new jobs coming to the area. You know, I was thinking back. We st we've done a little bit of economic development just here and there. But I will have to tell you that we never actually did what I consider economic development until this administration. Because there was money that was put aside uh, at C&B for any kind of startup for the companies and then there was also some put in there for us to expand to get our tribal members in the door for these jobs and uh, I told Hunter we need to go back and pull out all of our files and put together a report on all the different businesses that we've had some impact on whether it was for startup the job fairs recruitment or whatever and it wasn't just in Adair County. It wasn't just in Muskogee County. It's been all over the 14-county area. So uh, what I want to share with you is economic development is going, and uh, we don't necessarily have to start the business anymore. Actually, we can be at the table, and we're asked to be at the table because we can deliver on what we're doing, and we have some resources, and we have the manpower to do it. And uh, I'm just real pleased with this. Uh, we got a call about three weeks ago from a, a guy that we had worked with at the chamber there in Salem Springs. Gary Comstock doesn't work for the chamber anymore, but he had made the contact with this guy from Chicago. He has a power washer company, which is located between uh, Decatur and Gentry. Mike, you may know where it's at. Matt Lamont knew exactly where it was at. Okay. So we went up and met with him. He flew in from Chicago to meet with us and he's interested in us helping to recruit for these jobs. And I know you've seen these power washers. They sell them at Home Depot and at Lowe's and Walmart at the Super Sam's Club stores. And uh, you probably even have one. I know we do. And they're really neat because they're portable. And then they are making the big power washers that they can wash the big semis and buildings and things of that sort. So they're looking at expanding their operation into Asylum Springs. So we'll be able to help recruit for people to work there from Adair and Delaware County because it borders Asylum. So we're real excited. And uh, if it happens, uh, we'll be there to help with it. And uh, one of the things that he shared with us is that I have better rapport with you people over in Oklahoma than I'm having with Arkansas. And I said, well, that's good. And I said, we'll help you in any way we can. Uh, 
We're working with the city of Salisaw on an economic development project. I've uh, been in contact with uh, uh, Buddy down there at the economic development. You know about this, and we hope that that happens. If it does, well, we'll be there to help with that. Uh, we've got some new counselors in Vanita and Pryor. <laughs> Both of them's names Jennifer, mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Weber at uh, Vanita, and Jennifer Osborne at Pryor. And so we're real excited about our new staff. And uh, Miss Marsha White is the new manager for the vocational rehabilitation training grant that we got through the Department of Labor. And uh, Brenda assured me that Marsha is on cue. She's uh, getting briefed on a lot of stuff and she thinks that she can take it and run with it. And she'll be based here in Tahlequah as well as in Pryor. And then we've got uh, other staff that will be uh, coming on board for the other two grants just shortly. And I'll bring them in and introduce them to you. Uh, John Overacker wanted me to tell you that he and Willard have been working on the apprenticeship. Uh, it will be adjacent to the business technology classroom uh, where it'll be the warehouse. They're going to move the buildings trades up there and it will be more of an apprenticeship. We've already got a contractor that's with us over at the uh, hospital that's working to help us with some of the equipment. So they're excited because they're going to have people in the apprenticeship program over there. Uh, John, I pulled him off of it for a little while because he's helping with the Job Corps uh, recruitment drive. And then uh, we've also got uh, staff that went through some training, he along with uh, three other people. So uh, we'll be able to share some more information with you guys as the months come on our apprenticeship. So a lot of things going on. Do you all have any questions? Good report. How are we doing on that recruiting job corps? How can we help you as a counselor? Uh, if you know anyone that's 16 to 24 years of age that needs uh, a high school diploma or they want to get through GED and get a vocational training at the same time, uh, we have trades over there. They can stay in the dorms, and we do have some that can travel, day students. Uh, we have more guys that apply for the job corps than we do females. Uh, we have three different uh, health career tracks. Uh, we're hoping that uh, this will help move them into other areas throughout the next few months to get into other health fields once they complete that. And they can actually be apprenticeship uh, once they complete their training over at Job Corps. They will have done all the book work there at Job Corps, and they can go under someone with a license and get their apprenticeship, which will get their foot in the door for some better jobs. Uh, a lot of our electrical program people are making 19 and 20 up to $27 an hour and these are coming out of Job Corps so and we've got five that are out in uh, uh, California at the advanced culinary and one of them has already been snagged by a, a business in New York City so we're real excited about uh, some of the students that are coming out over there questions have you uh, contacted the superintendents I know you probably have in a some form of a letter letting them know that I don't know we can't recruit them I don't think that, that's not the word to use but just letting them know that we have spaces available uh, what we're doing is all of the counselors uh, have been told that part of their job description will be to help with the recruitment drive at the end of Christmas and at the end of summer. In fact, I'm meeting with them March the 2nd, and that will be part of their job description because anybody that's recruited for Job Corps is a placement for them, whether it's to a VOTEC or to one of the private schools. Even if they send them over to Job Corps, it's a placement. Good. So all of my counselors will be recruiting while they're out there recruiting for summer youth. Good. Good report, Diane. Thank you. Okay, brings us down to Anna. I saw her. There you are. She's hiding in the back. I'm in shadow again. That's right. <laughs> Just your life, isn't it? That is. That is. I kind of like it there, though. <laughs> Sometimes it's not bad. <clears throat> Anyhow, you have a copy of my report. We're busy working on... Um, doing our VITA sites and um, continue to experience high volumes of business loan requests um, from people. So um, we're just continuing along with that. If you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. I have a comment. <coughs> I had a thorough tour of the Spider Gallery the other day and just met some of your workers and some of your classes that you have going on. You, 
you were, and then went through the little restaurant there, coffee cafe there. And mm -hmm. They're really doing an outstanding job. They do a they're good job. Back in you. the little work area, uh, where you have that uncovered area, where you have that like uh, some design there on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, would you get a cost for us on what we would take? to put that in form of uh, like an arbor so we could do classes there. That's really unused space. It is unused space and the paint is coming off. It yes. was supposed to be stain. Um, actually, I believe that CNB has some plans that they've been working on for that area to make it a walkway from the uh, courthouse over to the prison museum and they're going to encompass that area for us to try to help us fix that up Good. so um, I'm not exactly sure what they have planned for it but it is going to be much more usable space for the artist to be able to work outside yeah that's a big space that's like a mm -hmm. 20 by 40 space uh, Matt Anderson and I looked at that and he said we had this covered we could have other classes we could teach here as well because you're running out of space there we are running out of space we are and matt knows we have plans for that area that cmb has plans for that area down there so I'll, I'll visit with him and make sure that his input gets included in that okay are you also responsible for that back side of that uh the the, the deck that's about to fall in <coughs> fire gallery um, the balcony on the yes, back? Yes, the balcony. Um, we actually uh, used a USDA grant that we received to do some renovations <coughs> inside that building for um, the incubator space, and they're going to be replacing that um, balcony. Good. David Moore is working on it, and um, I, I'm, I'm sure they picked the vendor by now, so it should be happening anytime uh, soon. You're ahead of the game. Thank you. Good mm -hmm. report. Keep me posted on that. I will. Thank you. Any other questions for Anna? Okay. Keep Thank up the good work, Tim. Uh huh. I have a terrible question. Okay. Willard? Yeah. Hey, Willard. Uh, well, why don't you just come on up, Willard? We were going to do your certifications anyway, but uh, come on up front and center. Yes. Hey, Willard, the, uh, uh, the, the tarot wall, uh, so. There's, I guess we have vendors that's that's wanting to get into a, a joint a joint partnership similar to the Manhattan Foreman. Uh huh. And um, it's you know it kind of takes away from the the purpose of the tarot of you know getting the putting the Cherokee dollar to the Cherokee pocket is the whole intent of of tarot. Yes. And when we start having partnerships similar to the Manhattan Foreman, uh, I feel like we're kind of manipulating the uh, preference on on the tarot section with the Cherokee, the the Native American, and then the non-Indian, and you know the five percent variance of being competitive in that. Yes. And you know, if you got a large business such as Manhattan and they want to uh, compete, they should compete with the other big boys, the, the Flint Coves, the, um, uh, uh, what, are, what I mean, other, other big vendors such as that that are non-Indian because we don't have any Native American vendors that are at that level. Of, uh, expertise resume wise and bonding capabilities so it puts it puts everyone else at a disadvantage in the bidding process um, I, just just your your perception of, of the tarot law uh, is there loopholes in there right now is there something that this body can do to close those loopholes to uh, Bring back the uh, the integrity or the uh, the meat of of tarot. That would be a question that would probably be better answered by our attorney general's office. Yeah. They are the ones that directed us to start doing the. We had to look at the joint ventures. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you guys are one that that vet them, right? You do the vetting for all the tarot certifications. Right. Right. 
so we got a directive from them that our law did not allow us to restrict the uh, joint ventures. So we had to include them as what we were directed. By the AG's office? Uh, it was an opinion issued, yes. Okay. So, so the AG's office is the one rendered an opinion to say that they're, you got the Terrell office is to do, is to render Terrell certifications. When you, when you said the integrity of the tarot? But, but when I say integrity, now I'm talking about the original intent. Okay, the original intent for the tarot was for us to certify businesses that are Indian owned, and it was to monitor the Indian owned. As far as the bidding process, we have nothing to do with that. I, I, that I is strictly understand. through the purchasing and procurement at CNB or through the procurement here at Cherokee Nation. But, but to what I'm referring to is, which, which you and I discussed this on the phone the other day, the uh, partnership of Manhattan and Foreman, which the, the big guy comes in and uses the little guy and uses their travel card so they can get into competitive bidding with other little guys. But the little guys don't stand a chance with, with the Indian card because the big guy, the big boy right here, they got more money, more resources, and so forth. And so, if we're if we're going to open up the, that can of worms up, and we're going to start allowing everybody to come in, the big boys, and start using the small guy with the Indian card, we're losing the intent or the integrity of of what Terrell originally started to be. To okay. Use. Whenever they come in for the certification process, they have to demonstrate that they have actually been in business for themselves and whenever this was presented at that particular time we weren't doing joint ventures we asked for an opinion from the attorney general attorney general's office told us that it was kind of vague kind of weak and that we could actually you know end up in court if they challenged it but given the fact that joint ventures are mentioned and it is part of our uh, our administrative procedures that we have in place. I did consult with the attorney over the tarot's, which is Dan Press out of Washington, and that some of the tarot's have worked with joint ventures. Joint ventures are hard to monitor, but that doesn't mean that we can't monitor them. And I feel like that the integrity of the staff that are up there that have been monitoring can monitor this. Uh, you actually have to uh, I'm calling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, you actually, we can monitor it, and the person who came in for the certification has been in business for a number of years. And I, it's I, not I, like somebody came in and they got an Indian off the street. Well, if I mean, the, the situation in Manhattan in Foreman, so if they're a brand new organization, they're a brand new company because they both came together, their like their their resume is is zero because that company hasn't built anything, and I'm not sure who is on the scoring uh, on this, and I'm not going against this group. I just I want to be able to fix it now so we don't have a problem down the road. Like I feel like we if if we're gonna allow this to happen, we just need to throw throw Terrell out because the I big boys. With you. I, I know. But the big boards are coming in, and they they got more resources, more money, more experience, bigger resumes. That is going to funnel out the, the small Indian vendors. For some of the bigger projects, Councilman Walking Stick, I believe Manhattan has bid on some of the projects in the past. And as far as the uh, person that you're referring to that came in, he's been one of our contractors he's been tarot certified for a number of years and he's actually done quite a bit of work for us in the past and the mentor protege is nothing new we did a mentor protege when we built the job course center well the mentor protege is is different than the joint uh, joint partnership that manhattan and foreman uh, formed they have formed the mentor yes. protege is redstone uh, redstone in manhattan no. Man Man Manhattan's the 51% guy and Redstone's the 49% guy because they're wanting to build their resume up so they can start uh, getting 
getting jobs and be at the level of Manhattan eventually. That's like their goal. But if we're gonna, if we're gonna let the big guy come in and have the same preference as this little bitty Native American vendor right here, this person is in the shadows. This person doesn't have a chance against, against Manhattan, you know. Actually, so. it's 51 Redstone, 49 Manhattan. Yeah. Well, no, no. And, and we've had we've Redstone got LLCs. Is the Native American component. Yeah. Well, and and this was this was hashed out yeah, three meetings ago. Uh, Redstone, is, Redstone is the is the terror of 51 percent on. I, I'm just saying an example. Oh, okay. like, like an example, in this situation, it's uh, it's Manhattan Foreman, but Foreman's the 51 guy, and then Man Manhattan's the 49 person. Were you not here when this was brought before the yeah, yeah. the and, council and, 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 and it was hashed out? It was and hashed out. It was yes. it was tabled and it was brought back forward that, to be correct. dealt with. Yeah, yeah. I, what, again, moving forward, I, I think this is going to create problems in the Cherokee Nation for our small Native American-owned businesses. And I, what I'm asking you guys is how, if I was wanting to round this thing up and start lobbying and get this fixed, is there, uh, it sounds like there's already been an attorney general's opinion rendered to state that these type of partnerships are eligible in Cherokee Nation. Uh, so uh, I guess I need to- And the certification it. committee certified them as a joint venture. Yeah, and, and I'm not going back. I don't wanna go back. I'm, I'm, I'm going forward. Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna fill the gap. I, th I feel like there's a gap. I guess I need to visit with our legal counsel and figure out what way we need to do to address the Attorney General's opinion on what he rendered to you guys on these joint par partnerships and see how we can remedy that. So, and, and I'll... At, at the time that that came up, the Attorney General's opinion was that the legislation was vague, if not silent to that issue. Sure. And so the only way to correct that is if this is something you're passionate about, if you would like to author legislation that specifically addresses these okay. things, I would say that get started on that, okay. bring it before this body, see if everybody feels the same way. Okay. There's there's nothing that they can do. They follow the terror law that we spent six or seven months, four years ago, going over line by line by line. Mm -hmm. So um, there's always a stone left unturned, but they're following the law that we passed. Sure. So. Yep. No, I agree with that. So I will. Uh, I get started on that. I, but I would like your all's assistance because I'm not familiar with all the tarot. So if I can rely on some of your expertise on what that law reads and the intent of it, you guys can help me get to where I'm trying to get to. So. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Another thing. If we have difficulty monitoring these joint ventures. We did say, you know, we do this every year. We, we certify them every year. We don't have to certify them the following year. So if there are some issues there that we're not comfortable with, we can always come back and amend and bring new legislation. Because joint ventures are new to us at this level. Correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. All right, fair enough. And rest, assur rest assured, if we have any problems, I will make sure that the chief's office is fully aware of it. Yes. Okay. I have no doubt that you can do that. Yeah. Thank so moving you. on, Willard, is they're, your list complete? They're good as they're they they're there. <laughs> <laughs> they're good as they are. <laughs> okay, so everybody's had a couple of weeks to look over those. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the tarot certifications for this month. Second. I got a motion and a second on tarot certifications. Are they all good? Say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to community assistance, and uh, I have one clarification. I don't know if community. Westville, uh, who that's supposed to be, but Westville's listed under me. And I'm sure they're great people, Council Crittenden, but uh, I'm not interested in giving them my money. Are there any other changes? Uh, we know who that goes to. All right, now, 1,200 to Westfield Little League. Yes. Little League. Yeah. Right. You don't want to split that? <laughs> no, I appreciate the offer, but uh, 
in there. All right, that is mine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jody, Jody, split three ways, Sequoia High School uh, from council members, Cherokee County. How much? Uh, 1500 oh. Total. So 1500 Total. And said you had 500 in the list, so you want to do 1500 Yeah. We already had five, is that right? I mean, that was in th today's list, so you want to add another 1000 we just add a thousand. Yes, yes, yeah. a thousand. And, and yeah. split it three ways. Three, three ways, ways. okay. Yeah. Madam Chair. Okay, just a minute. Councilor Buzzard's ahead of you. Yes, uh, Jody, I had one. <clears throat> I had sent it in, but I didn't see it. Maybe, maybe it didn't come through, but to the Northeast Community Action Agency for $800. Northeast Community <coughs> what? Action okay. Agency. And uh, also want to add for Councilor Anglin as Barry Senior Citizen, one thousand dollars. Did you get the uh, uh, in there too? Uh, let's see. Or was that last month? Yeah, yeah, 500. Yeah. Yes, it's on there. This month? Yes, it's on there for this month. Do you know how long it takes to get those checks? Because that, that event's coming up. Uh, if we get all the paperwork in, we can usually have a check out in a week. So. Okay. Councilor Austin, did you have a change? Uh, an addition. Uh, Claremont High School graduation bash sponsorship for $750. Claremore High School Graduation Bash. Okay. Four thousand. Uh, seven fifty. Okay, seven fifty. Junior. South Salt Chamber of Commerce, two thousand. Two thousand. Yes, sir. I'm raising a hundred. <laughs> Anybody else speak now forever hold your peace? Stick. Oh, uh, walking stick. Uh, Connor State, 500. And uh, uh, Bacon, Bacon College for their powwow. Yeah, uh, I turned it in. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Didn't show up. Never mind. No, these are taken care of. Okay. So 500 Connor. <laughs> I think it's 49. Well, that's how well. All right. Mm -hmm. Is everybody good? We're good. Y'all need a motion. So moved. Got a motion and a second on our community assistance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? <laughs> okay, moving on to law enforcement. Uh, looks like there are a few changes. So everybody check your stuff. And I need a motion. Motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? <coughs> okay. It looks like there are a few sports teams. Quite a few sports teams. I would entertain a motion. Second. All right, so moved. I need a motion first. So moved. Got a motion. Mm -hmm. Can I have a second? All those in favor? Uh, any opposition? Okay, were there any changes to the livestock? I thought I saw a couple. Jody? Uh, that would... Actually, no. There's not. Okay, so let's skip on over that. Okay, did everybody look over your roads? Uh, I do have an addition for roads. Uh, as for uh, Councilor Vasquez, it'll be uh, $138,000 total for the uh, uh, Vanita housing addition streets that's uh, sixty thousand six hundred six dollars out of motor fuel tax seventy seven thousand three hundred ninety four dollars out of motor vehicle tax okay anything else so let's get a motion let's get this done Move for approval. Motion and a second. Thank you. I got a motion and a second on the roads all those in favor uh -huh. any opposition Okay, that should be it. So let's move on to our uh, budget modifications. Councilor Austin, would you take uh, the capital one? 
Uh, this is an act amending Legislative Act 25-17 authorizing the comprehensive capital budget for fiscal year 2018, Mod 3, and declaring an emergency. I move for its approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. I think Councilor Lay is going to be very glad to see this because this is expanding the vault and registration. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. No opposition. Okay, let's go on to the uh, operating. Council Warner? Yes, ma'am. This is an act of any legislative act 26 17 authorizing. The comprehensive operating budget for fiscal year 2018 mod 6 and declaring an emergency and I put that in form of a motion by acclamation. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> awesome. Brings us down to announcements. Motion to adjourn. Good Thank job, you. David. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. Next meeting scheduled for March 29. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Let's go home. Drive safe, Sounds everybody. Like